Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the short game method of video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with comments from Jensen Huang of NVIDIA, as he criticises AMD for the inability to create an energy efficient GPU without leveraging the 7NM process. What makes us special, he says, is that we can create the most energy efficient GPU in the world at any time, and we should be able to use the most affordable technology. Look at Turing, the energy efficiency is so good even compared to someone else's 7M. Now obviously his reference was subtle, so subtle that it felt like a brick to the head and whom he was referencing. And I get a feeling some of you are getting the pitchforks ready with Turing and affordable being put together in the same sentence. After all, the 20 series has not exactly been known for being super cheap. But there's one thing you can give NVIDIA credit for, particularly with Pascal, Maxwell and Turing, and that is that the GPUs are extremely energy efficient. And this is simply down to the design of the GPU itself, the underlying architecture. To AMD's credit, Radeon 7 is pretty impressive, and for the price point of roughly the same as the RTX 2080, obviously it depends on the model of the RTX 2080 and so on you're going with, AMD have a pretty good contender on their hands. Most likely NVIDIA will be using 7NM from Samsung. And Jensen Huang has said that they are waiting for the price and performance ratio to make more sense, in other words, for the yields to improve. Unfortunately, what we don't have from NVIDIA is a roadmap or any idea of the architectures which succeed uh, Volta slash Turing. And we've heard it could be Ampere, and obviously that's most likely going to be on a 7NM process. But what changes there are going to be, whether it's really going to be Ampere, whether GeForce 30 could simply be a refresh of what we've already got, in other words, Turing, they could quite easily, for example, and quite easily, obviously, you have to still go through some design stuff, but they could, for example, just shrink down Turing to the 7NM process, make some changes like increase the number of CUDA cores or perhaps increase the clock speeds or increase the ratio of ray tracing cores to CUDA cores and other bits and bobs. Or it could be an entirely new architecture and honestly, no one really knows for certain. So it's going to be interesting to see how NVIDIA uh, continue to push their graphics portfolio as we are waiting for Nave, both Nave 10 and Nave 20, along with the expected Intel XE, which is going to launch next year. Keeping on the subject of graphics and Intel, after all, we did just mention Intel XE, Intel's MESA drivers are now supporting uh, Generation 11 performance counters. This comes to us via uh, forenix.com and according to them, the latest Ice Lake Generation 11 graphics enablement for the open source Intel Linux graphics driver is supporting performance counters slash queries for exposing them through OpenGL for the debugging slash analyzing of performance bottlenecks. And the Ice Lake performance metrics were added for being able to expose the clock's number of active execution units, cache misses, pipe activity, vertex slash compute shader hardware, thread dispatch level three and other metrics as well and so this actually came to us via an update which took place on Sunday. I'll also soon be putting together my thoughts of Intel's Generation 11 graphics and what I think of the their plans to enter the discrete GPU market. Now we're going to move over to lots of AMD news. While I've been recovering from the plague over the past couple of days, I've also been corresponding with several sources, and they've provided me some updated information regarding Matisse, a small bit of Navi information, as well as little tidbits regarding both Rome and Threadripper. So I'm going to start things out with Threadripper first, because it's by far the quickest piece of news for me to discuss, and that is that AMD are going to be targeting the fourth quarter for Threadripper's release, that is Threadripper 3000. I've had two sources which have told me this information. One told me it's some point in Q4, another one told me it's the latter part of Q4, so at least we have some commonality there that it is, well, Q4. I was also told by one of the sources Sources that AMD have not yet figured out what they're going to be doing necessarily with the core count, so at least they've not told anyone outside the company. So they're keeping that definitely a very closely guarded secret. Regardless, we do know that Fred Ripper 3000 is coming out. After all, AMD themselves have officially confirmed that. But it's nice that we've got kind of a tentative release date. Anyway, it's the latter part, once again, of Q4, it looks like. 
So what about other information? Well, I also have a tidbits regarding Navi. One of my sources has indeed confirmed that there would be a Navi Pro based GPU that AMD are planning to launch, although a release date was not provided. Now let's move over to the Ryzen 3000, also known as Matisse stuff. So a source has told me that AMD right now are internally debating whether to launch a 16 core processor or not at launch of the Ryzen 3000 series. Now, I just want to be clear, this is not a technical limitation. This is not that, you know, they're worried about you putting the CPU in a motherboard and it explodes or an inability of the company to create the CPU. Instead, there's a couple of other reasons. The first is a marketing one. Basically, when you put out a CPU or you put out any range of products, you get that initial buzz because everyone's talking about it, all the reviewers go for the, the different products, and that's pretty much it. And then obviously the buzz starts to die down. What AMD are considering, one of the theories anyway at the company, is that if they hold back a CPU and then launch it in several months at a time, then what that does, of course, is reignite the buzz. So that's one of the reasons potentially they're going to hold back the CPU. So according to the source that I was speaking to, the concerns at AMD is they're not quite sure how to market a 16-core CPU. Do they push it more towards the gaming side of things? Do they say that it's more like it's for content creators who don't necessarily need lots of I.O.? or exactly what they're going to be doing. So that is something that they're internally trying to wrangle and wrestle with. I was also told by this individual that uh, the power delivery for the motherboards is going to be of critical importance. Finally, I have a couple of pieces of ROM information for you. The first of which is that ROM is going to support at the very least 3200 megahertz memory. And this will also require a new motherboard. Now, don't feel so bad about this, though, because if you decide to keep your old board, not only will you have to be sticking to the 2667 megahertz RAM, but you also won't have access to PCIe 4.0. So obviously that's certainly an incentive for data centers to upgrade their system. That isn't to say that you can't have one of the new shiny ROM CPUs and stick it in the older motherboard. It just means once again, you will need to use slower memory and you won't have access to the uh, additional bandwidth of PCIe 4.0. I was also told that in regards to the clock speeds of ROM, well, you know how there have been all of those different benchmarks that have leaked online and the clock speeds have seemed pretty, what's the word, not great? Well, I was told that AMD are most likely either sandbagging with these results or they are low power parts. And I was told that Rome for the higher end SKUs is definitely going to be equal to what we have with the current generation Epics probably actually a couple of hundred megahertz above what we currently have with, let's say, the 7601. So certainly we wouldn't be surprised if CPU clocks hit the three gigahertz-ish mark uh, with an all-core turbo. Once again, it's also told that these CPUs have started to ship to HPCs, but general availability will most likely be in June, possibly July. In regards to the ROM leaks, um, it's actually interesting because Jim at Adorn TV was apparently told very similar information and he actually put out a video just today covering some of these very same topics. I was actually speaking to Jim via DM on Twitter and we both were kind of going through some of the same information and there was some stuff that he was told that I wasn't so it's probable that my source is not the same one as his. However, there is also some information that I was told that he wasn't aware of and there is also some information that both of us were told that we've been asked to not disclose to the public right now, simply because it would be too easy to trace the leaker back and, you know, get them in trouble, which obviously neither of us want to do. Obviously, both of us want to protect uh, anyone who sends us information uh, because it's an incredible privilege. Uh, for me to receive any tidbits from anyone, it's still kind of startling that people are willing to take those risks, willing to send this information to me, and I'm incredibly grateful to anyone who does so. You can, if you want to send me over a tip, it is Paul, 
at redgamingtech.com so just paul at redgamingtech.com and obviously your anonymity will be guaranteed with all of that said thanks very much for watching the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now